Good morning, and welcome to worship in this beautiful place. We're going to begin this morning by singing, and you've got to get up and move. All God's preachers got a place in the choir. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. <laughs> Listen to the top where the little bird sings in the melodies And the high notes ringing and the good old lines for everything And the blackbird physically Singing in the night time, singing in the day And the little dog clocks and it's not his way The other half got much to say And the porcupine talks to its name all oh, God's creatures got a place in the bar. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on the telephone lines. Some just fill up their hands and fall to anything they got now. <laughs> Dogs in the cats, they take up the middle where the honey bee hums in the great fields. Don't be brazen in the pony days and the old gray badger sides. Well, listen to the face is the one on the bottom of the booth of dogs and they give the bottom is fun to go to the bait to do. And the old cow just goes, Whoa! Oh. All the cats, please, got to be saying the choir. Some sing low and some sing high, some sing out loud and tell the whole world. Some just go out there and some balls are ready to make out now. It's a simple song, a little song everywhere By the ox and the fox and the grizzly bear The toby alligator and the hawk and love It's a sly old weasel and a turtle dove All God's creatures got a place in the park Some sing low and some sing high Some sing out loud in the telephone line Some just clap their hands and balls Are ready to be out of All God's creatures, that's all of us and all these creatures around us. The crickets are singing. Go ahead and sit down, please. And the bumblebees are buzzing. And the hornets are buzzing around us. A couple of announcements this morning. If you need to use the facilities, Margaret has asked that we go around to the front and stay on the, the driveway rather than the grass. There is a little bit of a wasp's nest in the ground over there. But stay on the driveway. You'll be fine. Go in the front door and the washroom is just on your left inside the door, okay? Um, if the cat happens to be around, don't let it out. Yeah. <laughs> if you do, scream, pop out. <laughs> um, Margaret, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. And Vernon and Jack for your help in uh, setting up and in inviting us in the first place. I don't know if Margaret had any say or not, but <laughs> Jack and Vernon invited us and then Margaret gets to put up with us. So <laughs> thank you to all of you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Wonderful to be in this familiar place where we've worshipped many times in the, the 19 some years I've been here, where we used to down by the other end of the pond beside the cabin. We used to hold our vacation Bible school Friday afternoon celebrations. And I think there were some kids who signed up for VBS just for the Friday afternoon. They wanted to be here for that. And we used to swim in the pond and have just a wonderful, wonderful time. So in my last sort of outdoor service with you. It's wonderful to be in this place. Um, just a reminder that next Saturday is our fall market. The long range forecast is looking good. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that the sun shines on us because we'd like to be outdoors. We tend to get a little bit more highway traffic coming in if we can be outdoors. So uh, we would like to get your contributions on Friday morning if we could so we can get things priced and ready to set out. 
And then we could still use one or two people on Saturday to help with the actual market. Um, it will run from 9 until noon on Saturday. It's been quite a week this week with the horrific stabbings in Saskatchewan last Sunday, the terrible flooding in Pakistan, and on Thursday, the death of Queen Elizabeth II. We come to worship this morning glad to be in the presence of God as we grieve each of these world events. May God's presence surround us in this beautiful place. We um, acknowledge the territory in which we are worshiping today, and we do worship on the traditional lands of Anishinaabe peoples, including the Adawa, the Ojibwa, and the Potawatomi nations, known together as the Three Fires Confederacy. May we live with re mutual respect and seek ways to promote reconciliation among all God's children. So can you join me, please, in our call to worship, and you'll find that responsive in your bulletin, so you can read the bolded parts. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. In the beginning was life, and that life was the light of the world, and the darkness has not understood the light. The true light that gives light to everyone has come into the world, and so we come to worship the one who is the light of the world. Let's continue by praying together. Creator God, we gather this day surrounded by your beautiful creation. Let us see the beauty around us. Let us hear the birds that sing their beautiful song. Let us breathe the air that gives us life. Let us be one with creation, ever grateful for your loving action in our world. Amen. And our next hymn is from Voices United for the Beauty of the Earth.
Well, hello, friends. Big and small, short and tall, toddlers and seniors and in-betweeners. It's story time. So today I want you all to imagine that you're little ones and that you've come to have story time in a circle by the pond. I missed you all while I was away at minister school in July, but I found a new friend in Halifax. This is my new friend. His name is Sammy. Sammy Salmon. What I love about Sammy is that they're made out of many old sweaters that would have gone to the dump. But Sammy's creator decided to make something beautiful from a bunch of garbage. I'm glad that recycling old things into new things is possible. Right, Sammy? So Sammy is going to help us tell the story today. And we're going to read a book that was written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and illustrated by Nancy Tillman. And you at home will, will get a good look at the pictures later. And so Anne is going to help by showing the pictures to all of you. Now I'm going to ask some questions, some interactive questions. And if you have something that you would like to say about some of these parts, I'd like you to come up and share the microphone with me. Or else you can yell out your answers and I'll, I'll repeat them. Liam's already joined in with an answer. Very excited to hear the story. <laughs> okay, so if you want to show the very first picture, in the very beginning, God's love bubbled over when there was nothing else. No trees, no birds, no animals, no sky, no sea, only darkness. Out of this love, God spoke, let there be light. And there was day and there was night. And when the first day was done, God smiled and knew that it was good. I want you to think about God smiling. How does God smile? Has anyone ever felt God smiling in their lives? Liam's smiling. I'm a little distracted. Take your focus off Liam. <laughs> I see God smiling through Liam. I see God smiling when there's a rainbow in the sky. In a rainbow there's... And wasn't it interesting that there was a rainbow in the sky over yeah. the palace when the queen died? Yeah. So I think a rainbow is God smiling at us. So Anne said the rainbow was over the palace after the queen passed away was God smiling. Joanne, have you felt God smiling in your life lately? Sure have. I'm going to be a grandmother too. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne's found out she's going to be a grandmother, and that was God smiling in her life. And now we'll move to the second day. On the second day, God said, Let there be sky where the clouds can float and the wind can blow, and the sky was bright blue and beautiful. Do you see anything in the clouds in the picture? You see an image in there? Do you ever look into the sky and see the pictures God makes in the clouds? Or have you ever had a scary time when a storm came and you were out in nature? I think Anne has had a scary day, didn't you, Anne, when a storm came? Oh, my goodness, yes. It was, I don't know, 10 years ago when we were traveling out west. I, well, longer than that because Michael was 10. You want me to use the microphone? Probably more than 10 years ago because Michael was 10 and what is he now, 26 or something? <laughs> so 16 years ago, my sister Audrey and I and Michael were traveling west. We were coming back through the States. Now, some of you know my sister Audrey was in a tornado um, when it passed through Barrie 30 years ago. So she's terrified of storms, or was terrified of storms. This storm came up, 
and we were in a tent and the storm was all around us. And if you could picture a 10 year old trying to comfort his aunt who was just quivering, we eventually had to leave the tent and go into a building. It was that scary, very, very scary. And that came from the clouds. <laughs> well, the clouds have changed this morning. They were fluffier earlier and now they're cloud cover. On the third day, God said, let the waters gather into oceans and let the dry land appear. <laughs> look, at, look at me, look at Sammy swimming. Look at the big wave. Where do you think that is, that big wave? Have you ever been to the ocean? Put your hand up if you've been to the ocean. Everybody. Who has walked on the shore? And did you see things on the shore? Did you see things on the shore that shouldn't be there? Like lots of garbage and bags and nets. What other things did you see? Did you see signs of God on the shore? Seashells? Seashells? What about little holes in the sand with bubbles coming up? And you know somebody's living down there. Tidal pools where there's urchins. And then God decided to make the world even more dazzling with tall trees and long grass. Look at all the trees and the grass. Look here, all around. Can you smell the trees? Mila, can you smell the trees? Did you know trees actually talk to one another? They do, they, that's right. They have a secret, it's called the wood wide web. <laughs> the wood wide web. And through that, they can share information like, hey guys, I'm getting bit by aphids. Put up your defenses. Or they might say, I have extra energy. I'm going to send it to that sick tree over there. It's true. There is a filament, a tiny filament, and um, like a mushroom that joins trees together. Jack, I bet you planted these trees here, didn't you? Well, I was just I was the smartest guy in the county. Uh, 11,300 trees on reforestation and a cent a piece. So it was $113 or something. And then I, I, I thought, boy, uh, you know, and then when it came time to live them, I figured I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. <laughs> For those at home, Jack has planted 11,300 trees on this piece of property. And he thought he was quite smart until it came time to trim them and limb them. <laughs> and then the first flower opened in all its glory. And we're so lucky to be worshiping in God's glorious nature today. It's so beautiful here outside. Yeah. yeah. What kinds of trees and flowers can you see here? Golden rods. Golden rods. I see a pear tree. A pear tree. Apple, tree. Apple trees. Oak trees. Pine trees. Pine. Maple. Maple. Cedar. Rhubarb, strawberries, raspberry. Those are really nice plants and flowers, aren't they? Because they can make dessert. <laughs> I love kayaking. And I love seeing the water lilies in the bay. Do you ever thank God for trees and flowers? No? <laughs> Eva says no. I think she might know about 
lots of us do. And, and we can even thank God for the fallen trees because the fallen trees provide nutrients for new growth. And on the fourth day, God said, let the sky be filled with the sun and the moon. And God scattered stars across the sky like sparkling diamonds. Who has slept out under the stars? I did that at Girl Guide Camp when I was about 10. Have you ever had a campfire on a dark night? Oh, there's, oh, there's marshmallows right there. Have you seen a falling star? Lots of people have seen falling stars. Did you make a wish or say prayers to God when you saw that star? Would anybody like to share about any of that at the microphone? And well, Betty, Betty, Betty's going to come too. Okay. Whenever we're camping, and most of you know I love to camp. Um, whenever we're camping, and I'm camping with the grandchildren, we're sitting around the fire waiting for the dark to come, and we always look up, looking for the first star. And whoever spots that first star starts with the poem, Starlight, Star Bright, First Star I See Tonight, Wish I May, I Wish I Might, and then we make a wish. It's really hard to keep the grandkids from telling you their wish, but they all make wishes, and I make wishes, and I think those wishes are like prayers. We also then start watching as the stars come out and we look for the brightest ones and we name those stars as the people in our lives who we've lost and they're peeking down at us. So that's, that's how we look at the stars at night. No, no, you were gonna come out and say something? No, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say that there was two guys out sleeping out camping and uh, they woke up in the middle of the night and one looked up and saw, I said, I can see a million stars up there. And uh, you know what that means? And the other guy said, well, it means that uh, there's just a huge universe and it makes us feel so small. And the first guy said, no, it means somebody stole our tent. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should repeat that. Well, John just said that there was two guys out camping and they l opened their eyes late at night and they looked up and saw millions of stars and said, wow, this means that the universe is so large and that we're so small. And his buddy said, no, it means someone stole our tent. <laughs> and on the fifth day, God said, let there be birds to fly and sing and fish to swim and splash. And the world was filled with the joyous sound of bird song. Oh, I hear a bird. What bird is that? A blue jay. That's right, it's a blue jay. Do you hear the birds, Mila? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite bird? Has anybody got a story about a favorite bird? <laughs> the phoenix. Well, Rob's got his hands full right now, um, but I can tell you that Rob is one that is very, very uh, loving of birds. And there's been many times we've had a bird hit our window and Rob will go out and carefully pick it up and just hold it in his hand and give it some energy and then that bird will be able to fly away. You've done that with a sparrow, a robin, hummingbirds. He's quite a bird man, a bird man of Greenbrier. <laughs> Cardinals are Anne's favorite. I love the blue heron. And just recently at, at our waterfront property on the eight hole water hazard, <laughs> we had a large white heron. It's called a great egret. So it's not the small cattle egret, it's a great egret, quite tall. That was quite exciting for us. A white heron? Wow. In the pond right behind us. Maybe maybe God could just, you know, make it land there. Right well, we're, that would be nice. That would be nice. And on the sixth day, God said, let there be animals, elephants, and giraffes, cats, 
and mice, bees and bugs, and suddenly the world was a very noisy place. It's kind of noisy here right now too with lots of crickets and cicadas. Who has a favorite animal or a wild, have seen a wild animal that you'd like to share? Um, a giraffe. Would anyone like to come and share about an animal experience they've had? I'll tell you animals I don't like. I don't know why God made them. <laughs> Mice. Mice. <laughs> They're in my house right now. Oh, no. Callie's up to eight. Eight mice. So far. So far. Oh. Time to get another cat. <laughs> and there's bugs. How about bugs? Do you like bugs? Why did God make bugs? To feed the birds and the mice. <laughs> what would happen if all the bugs were to disappear? What do bugs do for us? Do we know what bugs do for us? Make honey. Make honey. My favorite. Pollinate. They pollinate not just flowers, but all our crops. So they pollinate our wheat and our sunflowers and um, apple trees, right, John? So we need to learn to keep insects safe. And we do that by not using the poisons and things that we use to kill them. But something was still missing. What do you think is still missing from this story? What do you think God will make next? People. Margaret says people. Pat says humans. And God said, I will make people. And I'll make them like me so they can enjoy the earth and take care of it. And God did just as they had said, and it was all so very, very good. Look at all the beautiful children God made. Do you think God makes people just like God? How are we like God? Mila, did you see the... Mila, did you see the picture of all the children? And did you see what they had on their heads? What are they wearing on their heads? Crowns. Crowns, that's right. There are crowns. And why do you think the artist put crowns on all the children? What does that mean? Oh, listen to that call. Peyton, do you have any idea why there might be crowns on the children? You work with kids all the time. <laughs> They're all kind of royalty, aren't they? All children are royalty. They're all part of the royal household. God looked at everything that God had made and clapped their hands together in delight. Isn't it wonderful? And on the seventh day, Creator laughed and rested and enjoyed one glorious creation. Did you know that God took a rest after creating all the beautiful things in the world? It's good to take a rest. God loves God's creation. Do humans love God's creation? God made us to be helpers to care for creation. So we need to think about ways that we can help care for creation. Usually when I talk about uh, creation, there's a, there has been a farmer in, in the congregation, his name is Dalton, and he talks about going out on his tractor and riding up and down the field and just appreciating every bit of every smell and every clod of earth that he drives his tractor over. So now we're going to say an action prayer. So uh, you can stand up if you can. Mila, do you want to stand up? And we're going to do an action prayer. So everybody stand up. 
and we're going to pray with our bodies. Creator God. Should I have them repeat after me? Or just read it? Okay. Your love bubbles over. You say, here is some light. You make the bright day followed by dark night. You make fluffy clouds. You make the wind roar and puddles to jump in as we run on the shore. You grow climbing trees tall, flowers that smell sweet. We see the stars twinkle. Your love is so deep. Fishes swim in the sea. Birds fly in the sky. Bumblebees buzz busily as a snake slithers by. God, you make us too. Help us do as we should to keep creation healthy as you made it good. Amen. Amen. Now, Mila, we're going to dance some more. Are you ready for dancing? We're going to dance with the spirit. Get up there and dance with the dance. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's what are you trying? I know, right? Here we go. Come on, Mila. Come on, Mila. Dance with the spirit early in the morning. Walk with the spirit throughout the long day. Work and hope for the new life of born and listen to the spirit to show you the way. Dance with the spirit early in the morning. a little bit of dancing there. <laughs> Let us affirm our faith together. The United Church has two important statements of faith, both of which remind us of our connectedness to creation and our responsibility to care for that creation. <coughs> From the New Creed, we read the following words. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. We are called to be the church, to live with respect in creation. And from a song of faith, we recall these words. God is creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of the universe. Nothing exists that does not find its source in God. Our first response to God's providence is gratitude. We sing with thanksgiving finding ourselves in a world of beauty and mystery, of things diverse and interdependent, 
of complex patterns of growth and evolution, of subatomic particles and cosmic swirls, we sing of God the Creator, the Maker and Source of all that is. Each part of creation reveals unique aspects of God, our Creator, who is in both in creation and beyond it. All parts of creation, animate and inanimate, are related. All creation is good. We sing of the Creator who made humans to live and move and have their being in God. In grateful response to God's abundant love, we bear in mind our integral connection to the earth and one another. We participate in God's work of healing and mending creation. Amen. We have only to look around us to know how blessed we are to live in this country. We give thanks by caring for creation and all who share this creation. We also offer our gifts so others might share in the same blessings that we enjoy. Our offering will be received. Oh, listen to those bugs. Cicadas, crickets. So let's pray. Bless all our gifts, so God, as we offer them to you, to the church, so that as a community we might serve you, our neighbor, and our world. Amen. Yeah, I would have taken a marshmallow too. Except, uh, except we need a fire in order to have the marshmallow. Oh, do you? Oh, thank, oh my gosh, that's a big marshmallow. Wow. That won't even fit on my graham crackers. I wouldn't be able to say the prayer if I eat that marshmallow right now, so I think I'll save it for later. In light of the events this past week, we would like to share a couple of statements from the United Church of Canada. The first concerns the violence on James Smith Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. And this is how it reads. The people of the United Church of Canada express our profound grief at the tragic events in James Smith Cree Nation and the nearby village of Weldon, Saskatchewan. In this most difficult time, we extend deep condolences to those who have lost loved ones, healing prayers to those who are injured, and comfort for all who are afraid. Moderator Carmen Lansdowne, speaking from Germany, where she is with the United Church delegation at the World Council of Churches General Assembly, expressed her pain on hearing of these attacks and committed her ongoing prayers for the victims, for the families of the victims and survivors as they deal with the resulting trauma. As this tragedy continues to unfold, we seek strength for community leaders and for an end to further violence. In the words of moderator Carmen, may God have mercy. In our grief, may we be blessed with God's peace that surpasses our human understanding. Amen. The second statement concerns the death of Queen Elizabeth. Members of the United Church of Canada join with others in Canada, Bermuda, and the Commonwealth, and many other parts of the world in mourning the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth was 96 years old. Queen Elizabeth was the longest serving monarch in the history of Canada. Many of us have no living memory of any other queen or king. We recognize the complex feelings many will have about the legacy of the monarchy. The United Church of Canada honors the lifelong faithful service that Queen Elizabeth gave and her dedication and commitment to many charities and service organizations. As a Christian church, we hold that death is not the final reality and that all people will find fullness of life after death. We honor and respect Queen Elizabeth as a person and acknowledge her death with sorrow. We give thanks to God for Queen Elizabeth, for a life well-lived 
and for the completion of her life in the embrace of our Creator. We send our condolences to the King and other members of the royal family. While we honor the ways in which Queen Elizabeth has lived faithfully, we also lament the role of monarchy in colonization in many countries, including Canada and Bermuda. We know that power, privilege, and sin can and do accrue within institutions and systems. As a result, the history of the monarchy and colonization embedded within systems of white superiority have had harmful and ongoing impacts on many communities within Canada, including Indigenous communities and racialized communities, particularly those with ties to countries of origin that have experienced the trauma of colonization. A Song of Faith reminds us that this brokenness in human life and community is an outcome of sin. Sin is not only personal, but accumulates to become habitual and systemic forms of injustice, violence, and hatred. We acknowledge that the Queen, like all creation, is created in the image and likeness of the Creator. We honor the ways in which Queen Elizabeth has lived faithfully into this image. We mourn the ways in which she, as the embodiment of the crown and, and the structural sins of a colonizing Great Britain, has often not lived into this image or likeness. We rest, however, in the assurance that God's grace is unfailing and the promise that, as children of the Timeless One, our time-bound lives will find completion in the all-embracing Creator. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for the great cloud of witnesses, people whose lives we honor and cherish, people who have taught us how to live as best we can, we give thanks for the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who is now gathered among the faithful who go before us. May you bless and keep all who love and who will miss Queen Elizabeth. We pray especially for the royal family, all who hold her closely in their hearts, and all who will shepherd nations of people in the grieving process. May you bless and keep the Commonwealth and all who wrestle with the complexities of the monarchy and what Queen Elizabeth represents. We pray especially for those who continue to unpack the legacies of colonialism as we work towards right relations and reconciliation. We bring this to you while giving thanks for the life of Queen Elizabeth and while celebrating your sovereignty over all of our hearts. And finally, into the silence, we bring our personal prayers for those in our own lives who are suffering illness undergoing treatment and dealing with the complexities of everyday life. We gather these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn is for the fruit of all creation.
May the Spirit of God, who is above all and in all and through all, fill you with the knowledge of God's presence in all things. May the Spirit of Christ be within you, leading you as you are the hands and feet of Christ in this world. Go in peace, serving God and loving all creation. Amen. 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 Amen.